Good morning and a very warm welcome to this service of the word for Trinity Sunday. This week we reflect on one of the central mysteries of our faith, the reality of what it means to believe in a God who is both three in one and one in three. Such reflection draws us towards the very heart of the inner life of God, leading us to discover not only God's infinite love and life, but also to discover an invitation to live in the embrace of that life and love, enfolded in the God who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit. And so let us begin our worship this morning by offering our thanks and praise to the Holy Trinity. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the honour due to his name. The whole earth is full of his glory. The Lord shall give strength to his people. The Lord shall give his people the blessing of peace. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Faithful one, whose word is life, come with saving power to free our praise, inspire our prayer, and shape our lives for the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. God the Father forgives us in Christ and heals us by the Holy Spirit. Let us therefore put away all anger and bitterness, all slander and malice, and confess our sins to God our Redeemer. Father, you come to meet us when we return to you. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Jesus, you died on the cross for our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Spirit, you give us life and peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the God of love and power Forgive us and free us from our sins. Heal and strengthen us by his Spirit, and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given us your servant's grace by the confession of a true faith, to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity, and in the power of divine majesty, to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith, that we may evermore be defended from all adversity. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Amen. May the word of Christ dwell in you richly. May the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. We have today's reading. The first reading is from St Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 5. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our afflictions, knowing that affliction produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. Open to us the Scriptures, O Christ, by, by the, the grace, grace of your, your Holy Spirit. Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, one God who was, and who is, and who is to come, the Almighty. Alleluia. alleluia. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St John. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. Jesus says, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. 
When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason I said that he will take what is mine and will declare it to you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you O Christ. Christ. May the words of my lips and the meditations of our hearts be now and always acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Today we think about the nature of the one we call God. And before we consider this morning's readings, let me remind you of some of our basic convictions as Christians. First, we are monotheists. We believe in one God. This is something we have inherited from Judaism. The great statement of faith in Deuteronomy chapter 6, repeated at every synagogue service, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. There is no other God but God. But our Christian faith is that within this unity of Godhead, there is a diversity of persons. This reminds us that as Christians, we must somehow keep together simplicity, we believe in one God, and complexity, that we have come to know God as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Not three gods, but one God, in three persons, try unity, from which we get, of course, the word Trinity. We sometimes make the mistake of thinking of the God of the Old Testament as the Father, who is the creator of all. But that is not quite accurate. St John, in the great Christmas Gospel, states, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through this Word. The book of Genesis begins with the Spirit of God brooding over the waters of chaos. And when God said, let there be light, that act of word began creation. So, through Christian eyes, creation is not simply the work of the Father. The Father creates through the eternal word and in the power of the Spirit. Creation is the work of the Trinity. So from the beginning, from eternity to eternity, God is one, and God is Father, Eternal Word, and Holy Spirit. And that Eternal Word, 2,000 years ago, assumed our human flesh, and was born among us by the Holy Spirit, and the Virgin Mary, and we call him Jesus. Strictly speaking, we shouldn't use the name Jesus before the Incarnation. He is the Eternal Son, the Eternal Word, who in time became a human being, and then was given the name above all other names. Many of us love the hymn, 
The Servant King by Graham Kendrick. It's beautifully and expressively written. But there is a little problem. The hymn uses the striking image of hands. Come, see his hands and his feet, the wounds that speak of sacrifice, hands that flung stars into space to cruel nails surrendered. It's remarkable poetic imagery. The little problem is that the hands that were surrendered to cruel nails on the cross didn't exist until those hands were formed in the womb of the Virgin Mary. Millions of years after, the stars were formed in the heavens. Now, of course, this is poetry. So we must distinguish between physical hands, to cruel nails surrendered, and metaphorical hands that flung stars into space in the beginning. Just as when we sing of God the Father, he's got the whole world in his hands, we know that God is spirit. Hans is a metaphor. So, language has its traps and only gets us so far. Simply because the great God that we know and worship as Father, Son and Holy Spirit is so far beyond our human intellect or logic, or language. The eternal being of God, as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, is a profound mystery before whom we simply bow in utter worship and awe. At St Andrew's today, the final hymn at our 10 o'clock service is by Isaac Watts, and the final verse says this, Almighty God, to thee be endless honours done, the undivided three and the mysterious one, where reason fails with all her powers, their faith prevails and love adores. Love adores. This magnificent building, the crafted words of our liturgy, the poetry of our hymns, the beauty and textures of our music, the use of symbols and gestures, are all to remind us that we come, when we come, into the presence of this great God. We must do so in utter awe and reverence. God in Trinity is all holiness, light, truth, beauty, wisdom, power, salvation, grace. Worship and prayer must never be flippant, casual, chummy, over-familiar. If they are, we might have forgotten the burning holiness the superlative light of the one we approach, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And Christian discipleship is a lifelong process of exploring the mystery of God, of experiencing God's presence and reflecting on God's word. In this morning's readings, I want you to notice how naturally St. Paul and Jesus in the words of St. John's Gospel show this Trinitarian focus. I said earlier that creation is not simply the work of the Father, but of the Trinity. So in Romans 5, 
we see how redemption, salvation, is also the work of the Trinity. St. Paul reminds us that we can stand before God the Father only because of what God in Christ has done for us. Being justified has the sense of being acquitted. We were guilty under God's commandments because of our sins. But as St. Paul teaches, God the Father sent his Son to take on himself our human nature and to offer his perfection, his sinlessness, his obedience as a sacrifice for our imperfection, our sinfulness and our disobedience. On the cross, all human sin was laid on the Son of God so that he died for us on our behalf, the death that should have been ours. God accepted his sacrifice for us all. And so when we turn to the Lord in faith, repenting of our sin, God declares us not guilty or justified, thus restoring our peace with God. And when we come to Christ in faith, then the Holy Spirit takes up residence in our hearts. It's there in verse 5 of Romans 5. God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. St. Paul is Trinitarian. His writings give full honour to the breadth of our knowledge as God or God as Trinity. Similarly, in today's Gospel, Jesus at the Last Supper speaks of the gift of the Holy Spirit that would be poured out on the Church after his return to the Father. It is the Holy Spirit who reminds us of Jesus' words, who assures our hearts that Jesus is our Saviour, and who leads us into the truth about the God we serve. But notice, in the Gospel reading, we're told the Spirit only speaks to us of what he first hears both from the Father and the Son. So Jesus says to us, the Spirit will glorify me because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. This is saying to us that there is a remarkable oneness between Father, Son and Spirit. And so the Church is called to proclaim this remarkable and rich vision of God. For through Jesus and in the love and power of the Spirit, we can know the Father and can come to him in faith and joy. How Trinitarian are we? Do we tend to focus on the Father or on Jesus or on the Spirit and rather play down the other two persons? How might we rebalance that if that is true of you? How can we recapture that sense of awe as we bow before this mystery? How can we better handle simplicity and complexity? Well, that is why we have Trinity Sunday.
Let us pray. Glorious Trinity, you call your church and send it out to declare your love. And so this morning we pray for your church, that it may be attentive to your voice and open-hearted in its engagement with the world. We pray for Mark, Bishop of Berwick, and for the Crown Nominations Committee, as they continue to discern who you are calling as the new Bishop of Newcastle. We pray too for all churches of this diocese, asking that they might reflect your unity in diversity. We pray too this week for our work with Arosha UK, as we as a church community seek to be environmentally aware and responsible, mindful of our use of the world's resources, that your creation in all its splendour may be preserved. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Trinity, your world is created by your eternal love, knit together in relationship with you. And so we pray for your grace and renewal in places marked by violence, oppression and greed. We continue to pray for the people of Ukraine, those in the country as they face violence and shortages of food and health supplies, asking that you would guard and protect them and all who are this day in danger. We pray for those people of Ukraine in this village, asking that your welcome would be extended to them, that they may know that they are valued and an important part of this community. As you care for and sustain your world, we ask for your compassionate gaze to be upon all, working to support those struggling as the cost of living increases. We pray for food banks, for citizens' advice bureaus, and for those who rely on their services. We ask that you would foster in the hearts of those with power and authority the will and means to make material change in the lives of those who currently lack the essentials they need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving Trinity, your life is marked by an eternal pouring out of love between Father, Son and Holy Spirit, a continuous movement of healing and mercy. And so we pray for all your children in need this morning, particularly those on our bulletin prayer list. In a moment of silence, we offer to you those people and situations on our hearts. We pray too this morning for those who spend today feeling lonely or forgotten, anxious or fearful, unhappy or hopeless. Draw near to them in your threefold presence that they might feel the warmth of your peace and consolation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Living Trinity, Today your saints are witness to the fullness of your presence, drawn to the unfathomable heights of relationship with you. And so we pray for all those who have died, for George Clark, and also for Dottie Fawcett, whose year's mind falls at this time. May all those who have gone before us be counted as guests at your banquet table, and may we all be in earth and heaven, united through your love for us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And so we unite all our prayers in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Thank you so much for joining in this service with us this morning. As we have been reminded of the divine dance of life and love at the heart of the Trinity, may we discover the depths of that life and love in our own lives this week. As our worship draws to a close, let us pray this week that the life of the Trinity may find a home in our hearts. Almighty and eternal God, you have revealed yourself as Father, Son and Holy Spirit, and live and reign in the perfect unity of love. Hold us firm in this faith, that we may know you in all your ways, and evermore rejoice in your eternal glory, who are three persons, yet one God, now and for ever. Amen. Amen.